the Henrietta Knight Handicap Chase is the second race today. This is a Grade 3 handicap over the strange distance of 3 miles, 3.5 three furlongs. Now at the top we've got Acaster Malvis for Darren Thompson, Obsidian Shard and Found Her Voice for Leon Van Rensburg, Landlock for Greg Beckwith, Catherine the Great, Paul Rhodes, Southside Kevin Meenahan, Bronwyn Killing, David Robertson, National Decree, Vinnie Gerard, right on cue, David Hooley, Molly Awesome, Alex Cherry and Boomerang Amarn. Graham Clutterbox, so 11 of them meant a bit of a Gold Cup trial, it's a full furlong and a half further than the Gold Cup though, so... Maybe not quite such a good one, and away they go. And found her voice was quickly into her stride. It's fallen twice already this season, but oh, a very impressive winner in between those two falls. They're all safely over the first, and it's Landlock who is the early leader. The pace is not that hot. Acaster Malbus has moved through in a second as they get to the second. Found her voice was over in third, then Molly Autumn and Catherine the Great with the grey south side. We're on the far side. Natural decrees on the inside in the two shades of green as they make their way towards fence number three. And Landlock and Acaster Malvis are about three to four lengths clear of the rest of them. We're just about headed by Found Her Voice on the inside as they get two to third, and the leader made a mistake there. Landlock, and that's allowed Acaster Malvis to take it up as they get to the fourth. And this time it was Found Her Voice who made the mistake. So. Real surprise so far this season. We remember in the first week of the season and last week, found her voice on the deck in between though. A very, very comfortable winner. And in conversation, Leon told me that he thinks this is the best horse, this chaser he's ever had. And as they get over that one, going away from the stands, that's a pretty big compliment. But it's going to need to learn to stay on its feet if it's going to emulate some of Leon's past champions. But anyway, it's Landlark in the lead. From Acaster Malbus in second, gap of three lengths then to Catherine the Great who's in third. Nashville Decree is in fourth as they get over the sixth. And a mistake this time by David Hooley's Obsidian Shard. So, sorry, David Hooley's right on cue. So they're not jumping all that well, these at the moment. To say they're supposed to be top notch chasers as they get to the water, they shouldn't have any difficulty with this one and they all get over it okay. So, racing down the back part of the track now then. It's Acaster Malbis who's got a three quarters of a length lead over Landlock, who's three lengths up on Catherine the Great as they get to this ditch. You see them all over that one safely. And the grey is south side, found her voice took to the inside of that one, and then Nashville Decree just a length or so behind as they get to this next one, so they take on the uphill. After that, Obsidian Shard, and then Bronwyn Killing closest to us with the four white feet right over on the far rail, then is Molly Awesome, and the back marker is Boomerang Amar. But it's Acaster Malbis and Landlock who are disputing the lead at the moment as they get to another ditch. All over it safely, although they found her voice was a bit slow. Acaster Malbis in front, Landlock second, Catherine the Great third, and then found her voice four. Southside is in fifth, and then Nashville Decree, and then right on cue, and then Ronwyn Killing, and then Molly Awesome, Boomerang a Man, and finally Obsidian Shard is now the back marker. There's still a fair old way to go. And Acaster Malvis has opened up by two lengths now to Landlark, who's just been shook up to stay in contention with the leader as they get to the next. They both chopped that one really well. So did the chasing pack, and they seem to have put the jumping problems behind them, most of these now, and jumping nicely over the last few fences. At the midway point of the race, and Acaster Malvis is in the lead by about a length to Landlark in second. A gap of Five or six now to Catherine the Great. They don't want to let these two get too far clear. There's still a long way to go though. They've got a complete circuit to go yet as they swing into the straight. And Acaster Malbis and Landlark are six to seven lengths clear of Catherine the Great and found her voice as they take the first in the straight. Oh, found her voice has gone again. Would you believe it? Absolutely incredible. Found her voice crashes out for the third time in four weeks and Leon must be tearing his hair out. At the state of the horses jumping, and whether we'll see that one's going to spin over hurdles next week, goodness only knows. But it's Acaster Malbis in the lead from Landlock in second, and the early season anti post favourite for the Gold Cup is not looking such a good thing at the minute. And his stable companion, Obsidian Shard, is also struggling at the back, so we're going to be concerned if there's anything wrong with the Leon van Rensburg stable at the minute because it's not 
final in this race and it's Acaster Malbis and Landlark who are 8 to 10 lengths clear now of Bronwyn Killin as they get over the 15th. Then comes Nashville Decree and right on cue, Catherine the Great has just lost her place, then Boomerang of Mars after that one, Molly Awesome is next, Southside has also dropped back a bit, and Obsidian Shard is a good four lengths off the rest of them as they get over the water for the final time, and they're all safely over the water of course, with Landlark probably just about nosing ahead for a stride or two there from Acaster Malvis as they make their way towards the next, this is a ditch, and oh, Landlark's gone, Landlark stood right off that one and gave the jockey no chance at all, and that's left Acaster Malbis with a clear lead of about six to seven lengths all by himself coming to the next. Over that one they go, jumping into second was right on cue. Then Nashville decrees after that one, Bronwyn Killian, then Boomerang of Mine, Catherine the Great being pushed along. Molly Awesome behind that one, Obsidian Shard has gone past south side, but it's Acaster Malbis. The lead is down to four lengths, could he be getting a little bit lonely out there in front on its own? Comes to another ditch, gets over it nicely. The rest of them over it okay as well. Suddenly the field begins to bunch and it's Acaster Malbis racing downhill then in the lead. Catherine the Great swung to the outside. Bronwyn Killing and Boomerang and Mana there. So too is right on cue. Coming around the outside now. Molly Awesome the Grey Southside trying to run on again. Then after that one natural decree. Obsidian Shards now only 10 lengths behind the leader but Acaster Malbis has kicked on again with three to jump. Acaster Malbis is racing down towards the third last fence. Gets over in the lead. Good jump. Gets away from it well. Bronwyn Killing jumps into second. Then comes right on you, Catherine the Great is after that one. Then comes Boomerang Amar and Molly Awesome trying to get into it as well. And now Obsidian Shard is starting to make a move around the outside. They've still got three furlongs to go. They've still got two fences to jump. And it's Acaster Malbis who leads by two to Bronwyn killing in second. Catherine the Great on the outside is now third. Then right on Q4. The Great Southside is still trying to get into it. It's still wide open this one with two to jump. But Acaster Malbis, two lengths clear at the second last, gets over nicely better jump there by Catherine the Great who's now within a length racing down towards the final fence then Acaster Malbis over it slowly mistake by Catherine the Great here comes Southside on the outside right on King's trying to run on inside the final furlong it's Acaster Malbis from Southside and Acaster Malbis looks like it's going to hold on Acaster Malbis racing up towards the line but Southside now puts in one last spurt and Southside's beginning to get up and Southside's got up to take it Southside wins it Acaster Malbis right on King Bronwyn killing Boomerang and Ram Molly all and all the way back to Nashville Decree. And Acaster Malbis led everywhere just about but on the line. And Kevin Meenahan Southside gets up to steal it. Needed every yard of that three mile, three and a half furlongs. So Southside the winner for Kevin Meenahan. Acaster Malbis for Darren Thompson was second. Right on cue, David Hooley third. Bronwyn killing David Robertson fourth. And Catherine the Great for Paul Rhodes was fifth.